Marginalization, the Uyghur People by Charlotte Davis, Molly Lane, and Heather Johnson. We started off by asking people if they'd ever heard of the Uyghurs. These were some of the responses. Have you ever heard of the marginalized Uyghur people in China? No. 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 Okay. No. 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 I am not. No. 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 I have. Okay. As you can see, many of the people that we asked are unaware of who the weaker people are. This is why we're making this documentary to educate people about the terrible marginalization that is going on in China. Hi, I'm Charlotte Davis, a political science professor at Georgetown University, and today we will be addressing the topic of the marginalized Uyghur people in China. We will be covering six different questions. Number one, who are the Uyghur people? Number two, why are they marginalized? Number three, when did this start? Number four, where did this start? Number five, what solutions can we do to fix the problem? And number six, how did political and religious reasons lead to this? Hi, I'm Charlotte Davis, and today I'm going to be talking about this controversial topic, but before we get started, I'll give you a bit of background. So the Uyghur people are a group of Turkic Muslim people living in the majority Buddhist China. Um, they are concentrated heavily in the region of Xinjiang. Um, it's an autonomous region in northwestern China. And like many populations of Central Eurasia, they're genetically related to both Caucasoid and East Asian populations. These are pictures of the Xinjiang Autonomous Region, where the Uyghurs live. It's in northwestern China. Uyghur people make up 43.6% of the population in Xinjiang. An estimated 80% of Xinjiang's Uyghurs live in the southwestern portion of the region, the Tarim Basin. Outside of Xinjiang, the largest community of Uyghurs in China is the Taoyuan County in south-central Hunan. Outside of China, according to the World Uyghur Congress, the Uyghur population is believed to be numbered 1 to 1.6 million. Significant diasporic communities of Uyghurs exist in the Central Asian countries of Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, and Turkey. Uyghur people's physical appearance resembles those of Turkish and Chinese descent. These are what Uyghur people look like, and as you can tell, they do somewhat resemble Caucasian people compared to most other Asians. Hello, my name is Molly Lane, and I am a professor at Oxford University, and I am here to address some of the um, questions that people have about the Uyghur people. The first question that I'll be talking about today is when did the marginalization of the Uyghur people start and when have there been specific publicized instances of this marginalization? So for some background, the Uyghurs have had tension with the Chinese government since the 1990s. Street protests in the late 1990s were the onset for a lot of marginalization and here are some pictures that are some examples of the street protests. These protests that you are seeing photos of were in reaction to the Chinese government attempting to gain control over the oil industry that belonged to the Uyghurs. In June 2012, six Uyghurs reportedly tried to hijack a plane from Hotan to Urumqi before they were overpowered by the passengers and crew. Some Uyghurs are using violence to get their point across, and because of this, the Chinese government is taking even more harsh measures against the Uyghur people. For example, in 2013, the manufacturing of the Jiljab, which is a Muslim full-length outing gown, was banned. And in April and June 2013, there was bloodshed and 27 people died in Shanshan Shan County after the police opened fire on what state media described as a mob armed with knives attacking local government buildings. Some government officials have banned Muslims from fasting during Ramadan, which is an act of Islamophobia. The second question that I'll be talking about today is where did this marginalization begin? As my colleague Charlotte stated earlier in the video, um, the Uyghur people live in Xinjiang, that's where the majority of them are located. Xinjiang is a vast region of mountains and deserts. And Xinjiang and the Uyghur people have received huge state investments like industrial and energy projects and Beijing has been very keen in highlighting these as major steps forward in removing the marginalization of the Uyghur people. However, they are still marginalized today. Hi, I am Heather Johnson, a religious discrimination specialist from Ohio State University, and I will be covering two topics. Why the Uyghurs were marginalized and how political and religious tensions led to this. The Uyghurs lived peacefully in Xinjiang until the Chinese government expanded into their territory. The Uyghurs couldn't defend themselves against the Chinese government 
which lasted into a war that killed over 200 people. The Uyghurs started retaliating by using suicide bombers and they put them into very populated cities in China to show the government that they wouldn't back down. The marginalization of the Uyghurs never really stopped, they just slowly stopped caring about the Uyghurs. Some of the Uyghurs didn't like the violence that was going on, and over 300,000 Uyghurs tried to flee China instead of getting killed, but the persecution of the Chinese government was relentless. These pictures show how the Han, the Chinese government, has forcefully taken over Xinjiang and how the Uyghurs have rebelled. You can also see the peaceful protests from the non-violence believers in the different ways the Uyghurs rebelled. Thank you very much for watching.